Welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 4 Video 2 on defining tanks and their sounding pipes in preparation for tank calibrations. When we define a tank we have to set its permeability, we have to specify what fluid is contained in the tank, uh, that fluid can be overridden on a load case by load case basis if required, and we also need to define sounding pipes for tank calibrations. A sounding pipe is automatically created for each tank, it has two points, one at the lowest part and one at the highest part of the tank, but it's also possible to have user-defined sounding pipes, so you can define your own shape of the sounding pipe by adding additional points from the top to the bottom of the tank to define a polyline that defines the shape of the sounding pipe. Calibration spacing is automatic, but it's also possible to enter your own spacing if required. Let's switch over to Hydromax and define some tanks from the surfaces we created in the previous video. If we go to the compartment definition window and start a new compartment definition, that will add our first tank. I'm going to call that the mud tank and uh, I'm going to give it a permeability of 98%. When it comes to choosing the fluid type, from my library of fluids I can specify the density. So I'm actually going to add a custom fluid here. I'm going to call it mud, give it the symbol MU and put in its specific gravity. So now I can put in MU as the type for the fluid in that tank. The last thing I need to do is to specify the boundary surfaces, so I can double click the boundary surfaces column. And for the mud tank I can choose the two arcs that are common between the two tanks, as well as the remaining arcs and the top that define the boundaries of the tank. So my surface naming convention helps me select the correct surfaces. If I select and create my second compartment, I'll call that the box that's adjacent to my mud tank. It's going to have the same density. Uh, it's going to contain, let's just say, uh, it's going to contain some diesel. And uh, I also choose the boundary surfaces for that. So I scroll through my list. My two arc surfaces are common, and then I select the remainder of the surfaces that define the boundary of the box. If we switch over to our 3D view, we can see the two boundary boxes of our tanks are defined there. And then if I choose to recalculate tanks and compartments from the analysis menu, then my two tanks will be created. So we have our cylindrical mud tank and our box-shaped tank fitting adjacent to it. If I switch to the profile view and I zoom in, we can see the two yellow lines showing the sounding pipes. If I want to change those, I can go to the sounding pipes window and uh, you can see the two tanks are listed here, box and muds. I can change automatic to a user-defined sounding pipe and I can add an extra row into the table there to give it a, uh, a different shape. So for example, I can uh, cant that sounding pipe forward a little bit, so from 35 to 36 and 36 like so. So if I go back to my profile view, we can see we have a town sounding pipe. I've gone the wrong way there, so I can correct that. I'll put that back to uh, 34 and 34, and that will now be inside the tank. That completes our setup of our tanks and preparation for tank calibration. Thank you for watching.